let's talk about storing a motorcycle, particularly a dirt bike long term. Let's get into it. There's going to be some hints in here for anyone who's looking to store temporarily or long term any type of motorcycle, but this video focuses specifically on a two-stroke dirt bike. <laughs> So if you don't already have a shop manual for your motorcycle and you're watching this channel, I'm going to say it again. You should have a shop manual. But if you don't, you can do some research on the internet to figure out well, what's the most appropriate method of storing your bike. First thing you want to do when you're getting your bike prepped for storage is run it, warm up the oil, and turn off the fuel valve so that the carburetor then gets drained of all of the fuel that's left in there. The motor will just die naturally by virtue of not having any fuel. Then you want to empty the fuel. Now it depends on whether you have a plastic or a metal gas tank. If you don't have a shop manual, you're going to have to do some searching on the internet to figure out how to deal with a metal gas tank. Some people recommend putting oil inside of it, some don't. But generally what you want to do with a dirt bike, plastic tank like this one, is just take the tank off and dump all the gasoline out into a gas container. I forgot to mention this, but before you even get into dealing with the gas tank or doing any of that stuff, if your bike's not already clean, clean your motorcycle clean the drive chain we're going to lube it later clean off any crap that's on there make sure the thing is in a good serviceable condition so that there's not clods of wet dirt stuck to the underside or above a skid plate for example clean the bike down get it ready to store <laughs> that's a magnet on the end there for those of you who followed along with the build, which is pretty much everyone at this point, that's what my oil's looking like after initial break-in. Now that you've cleaned the bike off, you've drained the fuel, changed the oil, it's time to start thinking about protecting the motorcycle long term. We're going to start with protecting the inside of the cylinder. The inside of the cylinder on two strokes is pretty easy, four strokes a little different, you're going to have to look it up. those of you keeping track at home, that was five milliliters of two-stroke engine oil into the cylinder, reinstall the spark plug, cycle the cylinder a few times just to spread that oil up and down throughout the cylinder wall. All right, this next step is purely optional because it's a dirt bike because I've already got access to it. I'm actually going to pull the carburetor, disassemble it, wipe out any leftover gasoline, put some protective oil in there, and then reassemble the carburetor. You can choose to do that or you can not. It's up to you. So if you were like me, you might be asking the question, what are we gonna do with the coolant? Right about now would be the time I'd tackle coolant if I needed to. If your coolant is old or needs to be replaced, drain it out, put new coolant in there, fill it up all the way, no air bubbles. There are rust inhibiting chemicals that reside within coolant that help the system maintain itself if it's filled. Whereas if you were to drain coolant out of it and let it sit empty, you're gonna get rust. So anyway, I'm gonna leave the coolant in there. I may drain it in a year or so, uh, but for now, 
we're keeping the coolant as is. All right, up to this point, you've probably noticed we've been focusing on protecting the inside of the motorcycle and the internals and making sure everything is lubricated. You're basically fighting a battle against time here, and time has a bunch of weaponry. Some of that weaponry is rust, rot, dry rot, those kinds of things. But the exterior, there's weaponry that time uses as well. Things like sun and UV light can cause problems. Also, exterior forces like rodent intrusion, those types of things. The exterior also needs to be protected. We're gonna move on to that in a bit. A couple things you might consider before moving on to the next step are lubricating the cables, lubricating the drive chain, which I'm going to do here, and also uh, possibly changing your brake or clutch fluid, depending on uh, what you got, both front and rear brake fluid. I'd take a look at them, change them out if you need to. This would be a good time to do it. You always want fresh, good quality, clean fluid sitting in the reservoirs. This bike, brand new fluid, not gonna do it. But I will lubricate a few more things before we move on. If you don't have a brand new air filter like this one, I'd recommend considering grabbing a brand new air filter. If you don't want to grab a new air filter, clean your existing one, oil it up real good, and put it back in. Now you're probably thinking, that dude just wrapped an air filter that was fully oiled in plastic and then reinstalled it. That's right. I'm trying to keep the dust off the thing. I want to keep it in nice condition. I don't want there to be a bunch of crap settled onto it over several courses of, of moving and whatever's going to happen over the next few years. So wrapped in plastic, oil it up. Rodents might chew through the plastic, but they're definitely not going to chew through an oiled up air filter. So that's what I'm thinking here. Also make sure you're plugging the tailpipe. You don't have to have a fancy $12 rubber plug unless you want to pick one of these up. You can actually just take a piece of plastic or a plastic bag, put it over the top, throw a rubber band around it and you should be good to go. You really want to keep rodents out of your tailpipe or you're going to store it for long term. One thing you can do is put a little bit of, before putting the plastic on, you can put a little bit of steel wool in the end, just a swill steel wool Brillo pad. Don't shove it down in there, just leave it on the outside. The rodents aren't going to chew through steel wool. So if you don't have a stand like this, it'll help you get your tires off the ground. You have a couple other options. Um, for a dirt bike, obviously, you can lift it onto something like a five gallon bucket, you flip the bucket upside down and put the bike on that. If you don't have a five gallon bucket or if the bike's just too heavy, maybe it's a street bike, at least get the tires off the ground by putting it on something, meaning get the tires off concrete. The reason you're trying to get the tires off of the concrete is because the changing temperature can affect the rubber and cause it to ultimately degrade quickly. I have some foam mats, some interlocking foam mats in the garage. I actually wouldn't recommend those. Uh, the first thing I'd recommend to get the tires off the concrete is go to your local farm or supply store, tractor supply store, and get these rubber horse stall mats. These are the quarter inch thick, but they also make three quarter inch thick rubber horse stall mats, and you can get them cut to whatever dimension you want. Just get a big strip of it, and you can put that, and put your motorcycle, both front and rear tires, on the, uh, on the horse stall mats. The other option is uh, just take some folded up cardboard and roll the bike onto it. Now, I'll warn you about folded up cardboard. If you are, Putting the motorcycle onto little squares of, of cardboard, maybe you've got two or three sheets, the bike's going to want to shift around and be a little slippery. So be careful when putting the motorcycles, particularly the heaviest street bike, on little squares of, of cardboard. That's the advantage of the rubber mat. It's not that expensive and uh, they're not going to slip around on you. Anyway, that's what I recommend for the different ways to get your tires off the ground. <laughs> Alright, now is where you consider to cover or not to cover. It should go without saying you want to keep the motorcycle in a relatively clean and dry environment 
away from the elements. Even if it's inside, like in a garage, it's relatively climate controlled. You still want to consider covering the motorcycle, particularly if you have a light in that garage that lets UV light in, it can damage the motorcycle. If you don't want to get yourself a cheap, affordable, universal motorcycle cover from online or at a local retailer, you can always just throw a moving blanket on top of it or something like that to keep it covered. That not only keeps the dust off and keeps your cleaning maintenance down on the bike, but it also keeps UV light from damaging the motorcycle. One more thing, if you've got a electric start on your motorcycle, you're gonna to need to do something with the battery. If you're storing it long-term, I'd recommend taking the battery out and storing the battery separately. But if you're storing it for just a winter season, for example, just put it on a battery tender. Find a charger that'll work with your type of battery, whether it's lithium or not, and then put it on a battery tender for the winter. It's not really within the scope of the video, but I should mention, you gotta consider the battery. If you have a motorcycle that has a battery, most of these two strokes, they're not electric start, especially old ones like this 94. That's all I've got for you on this one. Just a few ideas for storing your motorcycle, particularly a two-stroke dirt bike. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.